Inside Donald Trump's prison cell, the surroundings are like any other small enclosed space. The walls are gray concrete, and a narrow cot with a thin mattress is the only piece of furniture. A tiny metal sink and toilet combo sit in one corner, while a small barred window allows a sliver of natural light to filter in. The sound of clanking bars echoes through the air as guards patrol the hallway outside. What? What? What is... President Trump is 76 years old and was found in federal prison. Trump spends his days pacing the limited floor space. The once powerful man now finds himself in a place of confinement. You know, if he weren't in the White House, then obviously that wouldn't be the case. He's dangerous because of the power that attaches to the office he holds. He's dangerous because he's so susceptible to uh, powerful, smarter other people. Um, it's very easy to get him to do your bidding. I think we've seen a lot of evidence of that. You need to just flatter him. And, uh, you know, whether you're Kim Jong-un or Vladimir Putin, he'll, he'll uh, you know, stop the sanctions or he'll look the other way when you start uh, building more nuclear missiles. It's quite terrifying. In addition to that, we're talking about somebody who's quite unstable. And the more pressure he's under, because he's completely out of his depth here. Yes, of course, uh, that would have a negative impact on anybody any children. To make it worse though, for, for Donald, when he was very young, two and a half to three and a half approximately, my grandmother, his mother, who was really the, his only source of um, human connection and comfort at that point, got very ill and was to all intents and purposes uh, absent from his life. So he suddenly found himself so young, basically alone in the world because my grandfather was incapable of filling the void uh, left by my grandmother's absence. You know, you talk about your grandmother being absent emotionally. Yeah. Do you think yeah. that's had an effect on his ability to love? Yeah, I think he, uh, because of the very vulnerable age he was when she became sick, um, I think on some level he experienced it as a betrayal. She didn't have the capacity to heal the rift even after she was able to. And I think that stuck with him. And perhaps the final betrayal was when he was sent to uh, the military academy because he was behaving so horribly and no nobody could control him. And my grandmother told me much later that she was relieved when he left. Uh, his, his casual cruelty to women and his uh, the ease with which he objectifies them. You know, he certainly doesn't um, seem to ever have had any real deep emotional connection with women, or well, I guess with anybody, quite honestly. But he objectifies women and uses them in a way he certainly doesn't do with men. Donald learned that you can never admit you're wrong. That was considered a weakness. And we've seen that starkly with the COVID-19 situation. Uh, he didn't do anything right away, and then when it was almost past time to um, to do the right thing, that would have meant admitting that he hadn't done the right thing in the first place. So that wasn't going to happen. So the situation got worse and worse. And closely related to that was this idea of uh, the power of positive thinking. Fantastic. You know, part of it was the toxic positivity and part of it was just, you know, having to convince Fred Trump Sr. that he was, that Donald belonged on the planet and, um, you know, should survive and should succeed. And he needed to make it clear to Fred that Donald could be of use to him and for everything else, love, affection, respect. It's understandable that, uh, you know, my uh, family members would cling to it, so no longer mattered. So there was this level of thoughtlessness around us. Uh, so luckily, we were able to laugh about it. 
um, because it's, re it's really not very funny. Although some of the presents were quite hysterical. I mean, to have your uncle and his wife, who were extraordinarily wealthy, uh, give you a, a three pack of underwear for Christmas, you know, it was a bit beyond the pale, shall we say. Well, what about the brand name handbag they gave you with the used Kleenex tissue in it? Yeah, that was actually to my mom. Um, and she was even uh, lower on the totem pole than I was. And one of the things that's also uh, telling about that is that Donald did, didn't even recognize that they were presents that he had given me there. Why did he need to witness that? He'd witnessed enough. And, you know, his children always took their cues from him. But even, so, without, even without your grandfather going, I mean, he still had two brothers and two sisters. And yet none of them, right. well, none of them turned up yeah. on his deathbed. I find that incredible. Yeah, it's to me, it's the most damning thing that we could say about them um, as people. Is it true that on that night, despite knowing how gravely ill your father was, his own brother, that Donald chose to go and see a movie? Yes. I, I think sitting in the house would have bored him. Um, he didn't have the patience to be sitting by the phone. And again, I because my grandparents weren't going anywhere, I don't think it even occurred to him to go to the hospital. Has in the past spoken about my father. He's only referred to him as a, you know an alcoholic. Um, he says that he was handsome, which he was, and that he was kind. But you know, again, in my family, saying somebody's kind is is an insult. But he never speaks about my father's accomplishments. So it's more about just letting people know who my father really was. As for, uh, you know, destroying the country, that sounds really arrogant. And um, it was per perhaps not the best turn of phrase, because clearly I cannot single-handedly do anything along those lines. But I do feel that I have to do whatever I can to make sure that people are informed and understand exactly what's going on with this man. Uh, you know, I I was actually a bit surprised at how surprised people were by the SAT story when, you know, the book first came out, just as I was surprised at the reaction to, you know, his use of racist and anti-Semitic language, because look what he does, you know? It, it shouldn't surprise anybody that it started that long ago. Um, especially since my grandfather also believed that you do whatever you need to do to, to succeed. Cheat, lie, work with the mafia, whatever. That's a serious claim that he, he got someone to sit exams for him. You're, you're comfortable with that, that that's absolutely yeah. true? I believe my source who was there at the time, I stand by it a hundred down really to a simple message, uh, Donald isn't going to get better. In the world of politics, scandals often make headlines. One such scandal that has captured the public's attention is the controversy surrounding former President Donald Trump and hush money payments. These payments were made to keep certain information from becoming public knowledge during Trump's presidential campaign. The story begins with allegations of an extramarital affair between Trump and adult film actress Stormy Daniels. To prevent this information from affecting his campaign, Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, arranged a payment of $130,000 to Daniels in exchange for her silence. This transaction raised questions about potential campaign finance violations and whether Trump was involved in the decision to make the payment. As investigations into the hush money payments unfolded, more details emerged about Trump's involvement. Cohen claimed that he acted at the direction of Trump and provided evidence to support his allegations. This revelation led to further scrutiny of Trump's campaign activities and raised concerns about the ethical implications of using hush money to conceal potentially damaging information. Despite the controversy, Trump denied any wrongdoing and maintained that the payments were unrelated to his campaign. However, legal experts pointed out that the timing of the payments, which coincided with the final weeks of the campaign, suggested otherwise. This discrepancy fueled speculation about the true nature of the hush money payments and their impact on the election. In the aftermath of the scandal, Cohen pleaded guilty to campaign finance violations and other charges related to his role in the payments. 
He implicated Trump in his testimony and provided further evidence to support his claims. This development intensified scrutiny of Trump's conduct and raised questions about his credibility and integrity as a public figure. As the story continues to unfold, it serves as a reminder of the complexities of politics and the importance of transparency and accountability in government. The hush money payment saga sheds light on the lengths to which individuals may go to protect their interests and the potential consequences of engaging in unethical behavior. Overall, the truth about Trump's hush money payments reveals the challenges of navigating the intersection of politics, ethics, and personal conduct. It serves as a cautionary tale about the impact of controversial decisions and the need for integrity in public service. The repercussions of this scandal continue to reverberate through the political landscape, shaping public perceptions of accountability and responsibility in leadership. In recent years, there have been allegations and legal investigations surrounding hush money payments made by former President Donald Trump. These payments have raised questions about his financial dealings and personal life. These hush money payments came to light during investigations into Trump's alleged affairs with adult film actress Stormy Daniels and former Playboy model Karen McDougal. The payments were made to keep these women from publicly discussing their relationships with Trump during his presidential campaign. These payments were made through Michael Cohen, Trump's former personal lawyer, who admitted to facilitating the payments and was later convicted on charges related to campaign finance violations. This raised concerns about potential legal and ethical violations on Trump's part. The hush money payments have brought to the forefront debates about transparency, campaign finance laws, and the integrity of public officials. Critics argue that these payments raise questions about Trump's honesty, integrity, and respect for the law. Supporters, on the other hand, claim that such payments are common in the world of politics and business. Overall, the truth about Trump's hush money payments sheds light on the complexities of political and personal ethics. It serves as a reminder of the importance of transparency, accountability, and integrity in public office and raises questions about the impact of personal scandals on political figures. That garbage can orbit of Donald Trump. No doubt that he's nervous. What'd you do? What'd you do? On Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, Donald Trump entered a Manhattan courtroom and pled not guilty to 34 crimes. Russia. Tick, tick, tick.